All right, let's go over uh, the practice test questions for chapter eight. So for problem number one, all right, they give us the similarity statement. And if we look here, QP is X. So what I would do first is locate QP and what it is uh, similar to. So in this case, QP is gonna be similar to JL, which is 20. So I would set up my proportion like this. 20 is gonna partner up with X. Then I can partner up anything else in the problem I want. It's up to you. Uh, so I don't know, I like this. JK is the first and the third, and that's gonna partner up with the first and the third in the other problem. So 24 is gonna partner up with 36. So now we have our proportion set up. You could have also partnered 22 with 33 if you wished and got the same thing. So now we're gonna cross multiply these, and I get 24X is equal to 720, and then divide by 24, and I get x equaling to 30. Okay, and that's all you have to do for that problem. All right, the next one, number two. Okay, they want you to find the scale factor. So scale factor is new divided by old. Okay, now how do we know which one is new and old in this problem? We're going from RST to XYZ. So RST would be the old and this would be the new. And those that would have gotten this incorrect probably switched the order around and got the scale factor kind of opposite. Um, okay, all right. So the new, you can pick any distance you want, any side length. I'll just pick uh, XZ. So XZ is the first and the third, that's 14. All right, XZ is gonna go with RT, which is four. So when I divide 14 by four, I get seven halves as my simplified uh, fraction. And that would be your scale factor. All right, next problem, uh, they gave you a triangle, ABC, and they wanted you to determine which of these are similar. Now, because they give you all three sides in each of these, you had to determine the proportions are the same for each of the three sides. If one side was not proportional, then you know that the triangles are not similar. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna call this small, medium, and large. And then I'm gonna match up the small with the small, the medium and medium, large with large. So down here, this would be small, medium, and large. So three divided by 1.5 is two. Okay, I have four divided by two, which is two, and then six divided by three, which is two. So since all of these are the same, this triangle is similar to that one. All right, we'll go to this one. This would be small, medium, and large. So small would be three divided by 7.5. And I get 0.4. Medium would be four divided by 10 is 0.4. And then six divided by 15. 0.4 as well. So this one would be similar as well. All right, when we go to the last one, uh, this would be small, medium, and large. So three divided by nine is 0.3 repeating. And then uh, the medium would be four divided by 10 is 0.4. And since we have two different values right now, we know that this is not going to be similar. Okay? And that's how you would do that particular problem. All right, next one. We want to uh, solve for a missing side length. Okay, so use the similarity statement to help you out. So the missing side length is XZ, and that's going to partner up with DF. Okay, so DF is 7, and that's going to equal and partner up with 3X. And now I can pick any other value as long as it matches up. So from the 7, I'll pick EF, which is 3. And that could, that's going to go with YZ, which is 4.5. I could have picked the other values. I just chose this and matched it up with the similarity statement. So now we'll cross multiply. So I get 9X equals to uh, 
uh, 31.5 and then divide each side by 9 and I get x equaling to 3.5 which would be your answer. All right, in this next one, what I would do in this case is, is draw out the, the figure um, just to make sure things match up. So we have one triangle, RST, and then the other triangle would be FGH. Okay, and then you can enter in the values of the sides. And then because three sides are given, we have to prove that they're proportional. So RS would go with FG. So RS is 10, and this is 5, and if we divided those two, we would get 2. ST is 11, GH is 5.5, and when we divide those, we get 2. RT is 13, this is 6.5, and when we divide those, we also get 2, so that proves that the sides are proportional by three sides, which is side, 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 similarity uh, theorem. Okay. All right, next one. There's a couple ways to do this, but the way we explained it in class is there's two triangles. This is what I refer to as the nesting doll. We have the, the smaller triangle, and then we have the larger triangle. All right. So in the smaller triangle, this length is nine. This length here, is x. So the 9 is going to be proportional to 9 plus x. And then on the left I have 6 and that's going to partner up with 8. Okay, how do I get 8? It's 6 plus 2. Now a lot of students think that if this is 2 this has to be 2 and that's not necessarily the case. So don't just assume that's 2 and, and plug it in. You'll find out that that, that would actually not work out. So now I cross multiply, so I get 18 is equal to 6 times 9 plus x. Okay, and we would use distribution on this problem. Sorry, this is 8, not 2. I screwed up, I put two instead of the whole distance. Don't, don't do mistakes like me. All right, so you get 54 plus six X. I would subtract 54 from both sides. And get X equaling to three. All right, number seven. All right, so we have two rectangles. All right, so rectangle A is 10 by 15, and rectangle B has a length of 45. Now, what happens in this problem is 45 can be the short, and 45 can also be the longest side. So we have to do two different um, calculations here. So if 45 is long, what would the value, the missing value be? So 15 would partner up with uh, 45, and then 10 would partner up with x. Okay, so we cross multiply, I get 15x is equal to 450, x will equal to 30, which is right here. Okay, now if I switched it around, and this were the small, and now this is long, it's gonna change up our proportion. So uh, in this case, 15 is going to partner up with x. And then 10 is going to partner up with 45. So I get 45 times 15. And I get 67.5 as my value. So uh, most of you, if you got this one incorrect, you probably did one value, not both. Um, so because they didn't tell you what value in the rectangle 45 was, you have to do two of those. Okay. All right, the next problem, they give you a triangle. All right, so this 
comes back to now uh, right triangles. If we have legs of triangles, we're dealing with a right triangle. Okay, so we have 15 and 20, and they want us to determine the hypotenuse. So this would be Pythagorean theorem. So 15 squared plus 20 squared equals what I'll call it x. So in the calculator, if you do 15 squared, 20 squared, square root it, you would get 25 as your answer for x. Okay. Now, because the scale factor, by the way, this is the smaller triangle, correct? So the larger triangle is going to be twice as long as this because the scale factor is 1 to 2. So you would take 25 times 2, and that's how you would end up with 50. All right, so number nine, uh, we have a rectangle, rectangular patio, right? The backyard is 50, sorry, 40 feet long by 32. And then it says the length of your patio is 14. They want you to find X and then find the perimeter of the uh, actual patio itself. So in this case, the length and width in length are given in the problem and that tells you what you need to match up with. So 40 equals 14, 32 equals to x. So we'll cross multiply and divide. I get x equaling 11.2. So now my answer isn't 11.2 but now I have to find the perimeter of this. So I would do 14 plus 14 which is 28 plus 11.2 plus 11.2, and that would give you your 50.4 as your perimeter. Okay. All right, next we have a, a building in the shadow. So here's your building, here's your shadow. The shadow is 55 feet long, okay? And we're gonna end up needing to convert that in a second. Over here, we have a person whose shadow is 45 inches, but their height is five foot three. So what we wanna do in this case is convert the height to inches and convert this to inches as well. So we'll multiply by 12, which gives us 660 inches. At the very end, because it wants feet, we're gonna to have to convert it back. So this at least puts us in the same units. So the height of the building would partner up with the height of the person. The shadow of the building would partner up with the shadow of the person, like that. Cross multiply and divide. And I get x equaling 924 inches. So to convert that to feet, we would divide by 12, which gives us 77 feet tall, which is the answer for that particular problem. All right. And the last question is we wanna find the distance across the lake. Okay, so 52 is gonna partner up with 10. And then they want WX, which is here, and that's gonna partner up with eight. So X will partner up with eight. So I get 10X is equal to 41.6 feet. All right, there you go.